Today is a special day because DJI, the company that makes all the crazy drones that everyone's using, has finally announced and they are releasing the one and only Osmo Action Camera. Here's the thing is they sent it to me early so I could put it to the test and give you guys my honest opinion on it. Just for the record, I wasn't paid to say anything in this video, I was free to say my own opinion, so everything you are hearing is my own thoughts. Let's put this all in perspective. Ever since I started my YouTube channel in 2010, I was using sport cameras, as far as action sport cameras, little small cameras. Um, even from the beginning of my career, that's what had a significant impact. So for me, this is a big deal. We were taking cameras this size and we we're strapping them to bikes, strapping them to soccer balls, strapping them to golf clubs, whatever we could think of as far as to get an interesting perspective that people had never seen before. Like that's what we were all about. So let me just show you guys a couple seconds of crazy stuff that we've done with small action cameras. Let's kick it off. But of course, you're not here to see that footage. You're here to see what this camera is capable of doing. So I got set in this several months ago. Um, the first one we got was a beta prototype. One of the videos we did recently was Fabio in Paris and London, incredible athlete, but we had him take this down the stairs. Now the footage you're seeing right now is strictly just beta test footage. Since then it's actually improved substantially. As you can see already, the camera is very small, but how does the image look? So last week I took the camera up to one of my favorite places in the world in Utah and all the images that you're seeing right now were captured with this camera. All the shots you're seeing right now were filmed in 4K at 24 frames per second and I was just holding the camera static just like this, not moving, not panning, but I was also not using a tripod. I did have the smooth stabilizer turned on. Now the stabilizer for this camera is called the rock steady mode but it's just a matter of turning on the camera, setting your frame rate, and clicking a button that says rock steady on it. So all the shots you're seeing right now, 24 frames per second in 4K. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is how well the rock steady mode works when you're walking with it. All the shots you're seeing currently right now, as I'm speaking, were all filmed with the Osmo Action in 4K at 24 frames per second. No image stabilizer was used in post-production. No warp stabilizer, nothing in Premiere, After Effects. This is all straight directly out of camera. I'm also using no stabilizer as far as a glide cam, all the other products that are out there. I'm not hooking this camera into anything. As you can see right now, I'm even showing you guys my shadow, showing you guys this is all handheld, just carrying like this with me walking around and kind of pointing it in different directions just so you can see how smooth this camera is. So you don't need some fancy contraption out there to get the best shots possible. But for me personally, filming out in the middle of nowhere on this hike, I was super impressed that I could be carrying a backpack, carrying a tripod and walking with this and having the shots still super smooth. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how well the camera handles pans. Movements like this. A lot of cameras actually struggle with this because they have what's called the rolling shutter effect where when you're starting to move the camera left or right or have fast moving objects, it starts to have a jello effect is what they call it where the image just looks a little funky. So right now everything you're seeing was shot with this camera, 24 frames per second with me just kind of moving the camera left to right right to left and some of those shots you're seeing right now with the waterfall kind of up and down and slightly but I wasn't noticing any issues with the rolling shutter with the stuff that I was filming. Now of course I'm not filming any crazy action stuff right now but very impressed with how clean the image actually looks. So the next big question is how is the slow motion? So this camera can do 4K at 60 frames per second. Let me show you some of that footage right now. We've got a crazy waterfall going on that we discovered on this hike. I got shots in front of it, behind it, just showing you guys how clean the image looks. Now let's say I wanna actually film a lot slower than that. You can do that, you're not gonna be disappointed. But this camera can do 1080p resolution at 240 frames per second. And it can also do that at 720p, but who wants to film at 720p when you can do that same thing at 1080p? So now all the shots that you guys are seeing were shot at 1080p resolution at 240 frames per second. Now I was curious while I was filming this stuff is 
how is the dynamic range? Now that's another big point with this camera is it can also shoot in HDR, high dynamic range. Now for what I was filming, I actually never filmed anything in HDR. This is all filming straight out of camera, no special camera settings, not tweaking anything, just the normal profile, that is what you're seeing. For all the footage today that I'm showing you guys, there is absolutely no color correction. This is everything straight out of camera. Now for me, I'm all about actually seeing the footage and how it actually looks. Most of the stuff right now that you guys are seeing is shot at high noon when the lighting is the least flattering, but I wanted to give you guys a good idea as far as the dynamic range. From using this camera, that was one thing I was really impressed with. Now when I say dynamic range, what does that even mean? Well, the way I'm kind of talking about it is how well does it do with the high highlights as far as the things that are really bright and how well does it do with the darks. So you'll have high contrast, low contrast, and most cameras they struggle as far as if something's really bright, the things that are really contrasty or really dark don't look as good. So all the shots you're seeing right now, I was very impressed with how well it handled the highlights and also the shadows. Now the next examples that I'm going to show you guys is I actually mounted this camera to my car and drove through several tunnels. I was just curious how well the footage would look. Now, as I was going through these tunnels multiple times just to get a really good shot that I was stoked on, I noticed that the exposure, because it was just set on auto, it would overexpose a little bit as I was going through the tunnels. Most cameras out there do the exact same thing, but most sport cameras out there, cameras that are this small, they don't have manual settings. So I was like, does this camera have manual settings as well? So that's when I jumped into the menus and I had full control as far as my shutter speed and also my ISO. So the next shot you're seeing is I just did the shot on auto, which you're seeing right now. Now I change the camera settings to manual. Now everything you're seeing is I set it so you're not seeing things get a little bit blown out as I'm going through the tunnel as far as filmmaking at its finest. Manual settings are always the best settings in my opinion. You don't always have that option, especially when you're doing action sport photography. But for this case, I had the time to actually manually set it and you have those manual controls within the camera and it's really easy to find. All right, a big thing with this camera is it can also do a 120 second long exposure. So 120 seconds, it will open up the shutter essentially. There's not an actual shutter in here, but it's opening up the image and it's taking a picture for 120 seconds. So why does that even matter? Well, people that love doing night photography, like this shot you're seeing right now, this was taken with a 30 second shutter. So try and imagine what you can do with a 120 second shutter. So basically there's unlimited options as far as super low light situations that you can capture incredible images. Now the camera is also waterproof, so you can take it snorkeling, scuba diving, but you can only go so far. I'm gonna have that number pop up right now. All right, so I showed you guys some of the footage. I think personally this is the best action camera out there, which is a really big claim because there's so many incredible action cameras out there. Just for the record, I've been using these since 2010. Not this camera, but action sport cameras as far as little condensed cameras, and I've seen all the evolutions. I've worked with over seven different brands. Um, we've actually done several sponsored videos with a lot of different action sport cameras out there, but for us and the image that I love, this is the best image out there for a camera this small. So you're probably wondering, well, Devin, prove it to me. Let me prove it to you. Now, one of the biggest features of this camera that makes it different than so many other action sport cameras out there is the fact that it has not one screen, but two screens, dual screens, mind blown. So if you hold this button down, go ahead and hold it down right now, it instantly swaps the screen. So now I can see exactly what I'm filming for the world that we live in where everyone is doing selfies, where everyone's doing vlogging, talking to the camera, like I can now see exactly what the camera is picking up. Now, I myself am not a vlogger. So this isn't a setting that I personally am gonna use all the time. This is what everyone else is using all the time. But why this is a big deal for the kind of movies that we do is a lot of times when we're using smaller cameras, we're putting them up, up against the walls or putting them in kind of weird, strange places. And of course you can pop on the phone and see what the camera's capturing. But a lot of times I don't have the time to spend jumping on my phone, making sure the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all that stuff is connected. I can now put it against the wall or wherever I want to get the shot and I can see exactly what is framed up with the camera and I can adjust accordingly because I can see here and I don't have to look back here. So for the kind of stuff that we do, we're putting cameras in crazy places, this is a big deal. So obviously the biggest competitor to this, and you can even see, it looks like a GoPro. So how does the image actually compare to a GoPro? So this is gonna be compared to this camera. This is a GoPro 7 Black, and then we have the Osmo Action. As you can see, they are very similar in size. 
they are, I would say, identical in sizes. Big things for us is we tend, when filming action sports stuff, to scratch the lenses. So the first thing I notice is you have the lens here. It's actually a removable lens. This might not be a big deal for a lot of filmmakers out there, but for us, when we tend to damage lenses, I can damage this part and not have to send it in or stress about it. I can just swap it off on set, on location, and put a new lens on. Now, from filming so far, nothing has gotten scratched, so not terribly worried about it. Um, I would say it's scratch resistant, but no issues with that. All right, so the big question that everyone's gonna have on their mind is how does the GoPro 7 Black, the, kind of the leader of the market, compare to the brand new Osmo Action? So we built, not really built, because it was already made, but we have our own rig that we have set up to put this to the test. Now we wanna make sure it was completely fair, so when we filmed everything you're about to see, we had it on a little pole, dead center in the middle, so there was nothing like on the side kind of making something shake a little bit more. It was all completely even as far as everything you're about to see, exact same lightings. It is also worth mentioning that I'm using the profiles that both cameras come with. When you first turn on the cameras, of course you have like the proteins and all the things that are potentially closer to the raw file format, but this is just straight out of camera, what the image looks like, um, no fancy settings, nothing like that, but you have a lot of those options with both of these cameras, but we wanted to just show you guys what it looked like straight out of camera, no color correction whatsoever. So let's show you guys some of the examples right now. So the first thing we're gonna look at with both of these examples is the dynamic range. How well do these cameras handle the shadows and the highlights? One of the biggest things I noticed right off the bat is how well or how much better the Osmo Action handles the shadows. And you can see, if you look at both images side by side, is the Osmo Action, the, the shadows from the tree, they're not as dark or not as contrasty, which for someone that color corrects, that will give you more information. Whereas if you're dealing with something like the GoPro, you're not gonna have as much information to get the most out of the image. Now also take a look at the clouds up top. You'll also see that the skies, you have much more dynamic range on the Osmo Action where I feel the image of the clouds looks cleaner. It doesn't look as pixelated. All right, the next shot we're gonna see, and once again, let me make sure it's very clear that all these examples I'm showing you right now are shot at 4K at 24 frames per second. Now, the GoPro can actually film wider, so for people that want a little bit wider, or even more wider shot, you're probably gonna wanna go with the GoPro. Now, the problem with wider shots is you're starting to get a fisheye. For these examples that you guys are seeing right now is we had on the GoPro, it was just set at wide. We didn't set it to super wide. So you could go even wider on this, but the wide setting was the closest to the Osmo Action, so that's why you put them side by side. And of course, because this isn't a sponsored video, I can say exactly how I feel. So in this shot, this is where the GoPro 7 starts to shine a little bit more. Most cameras struggle substantially with foliage, lots of crazy lines all over the place. So in this shot right here, we took it right into the forest and we wanted to see how both cameras compare. I know there's a lot of people out there doing mountain bike stuff with these action sport cameras. And the one thing we noticed with both of these cameras, side by side and a lot of crazy foliage, is the image, as far as the forest goes, it looked a little bit cleaner on the GoPro 7. But this is worth mentioning, Bubba on our team, we had him walk by and he was wearing a white shirt. Now as he starts walking by camera, I'm gonna actually have the camera's freeze frame. And as you can see, Bubba's white shirt with the GoPro image, it actually looks, it has kind of this blue tint to it, which isn't ideal when he's wearing a white shirt. So as far as the Osmo camera goes, I felt it actually, as far as looking how it looked in real life, is the image just a little bit cleaner as far as Bubba's white shirt goes on the Osmo action. Now let's go to the boardwalk. For this test, we wanted to turn off image stabilization on both cameras and see how both of them did with us just kind of holding it on a pole and running with the camera. So, and as you can see, it both looked shaky. Um, I don't personally feel one does better with image stabilizer turned off. They both look super comparable. I'll freeze the frame right now for you guys so you guys can just see what the frames look like when they're frozen. But there wasn't something that really stood out as far as both cameras comparing them side by side. With image stabilizer turned off, the images looked similar when we were running with the cameras. Now we wanted to see, once again going back to the foliage, is how well these cameras handle, once again turning on the smooth, hyper smooth, as far as what GoPro calls it, or Rocksteady as DJI Osmo Action calls it, but we wanted to see how the camera did with our subject, 
Bubba once again walking through the forest and Zane following along on the forest. So it was essentially doing this exact same move right here. Now the first thing we noticed is both images look smooth, they look great, but we were noticing that the GoPro 7, because we had the sun flickering down right above us through the trees, that the GoPro 7 was compensating more where it was kind of exposing a little bit different where you could actually see that where it stood up more, not in a good way, but in a bad way. Um, and I felt it was more distracting. So let me play that clip back once again. Now, as you can see, the exposure on the GoPro 7, and once again, these are both set to auto, you can see it compensating more where you can see the exposure changing, you can see the difference. And I felt personally that you couldn't see that difference hardly at all with the DJI Osmo Action. Also with both image stabilizer turned on, I also noticed that the Osmo once again was smoother with it hooked to a pole. And once again, we had the same issue we had before with Bubba's white shirt is, I'm going to pause the image once again, you'll actually see that Bubba's shirt looks a little bit bluer tint on the GoPro 7 when he was wearing a white shirt. Now we're gonna have Zane show you guys a tracking shot that he captured filming Bubba walk on the boardwalk. Now, Zane started off running to get this shot and then he starts slowing down once he gets a little bit closer to Bubba. Now the Osmo is smoother. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video here. We can see that the GoPro once again is wider um, and slightly fish-eyed. Now the GoPro can get even wider. So if you want like really, really wide shots, you're probably gonna wanna go with the GoPro. But realistically, once we're already so wide as it is, do you really want it? Do you really need it? Of course, the more options you have, the better. But I do feel with the Osmo Action is the image by far look cleaner and sharper and more natural feeling. So for one of the last video examples that we're gonna show you guys is we wanna show you Kaylin Chan, one of the world's best parkour athletes. We wanna see how well these cameras handled slow motion. So for this first example I'm gonna show you guys is we're having Kaylin Chan do a parkour trick. We filmed both of these examples in 4K at 60 frames per second. And as we see right now, image stabilizer was turned on both of these cameras. And as you can see, and I'm gonna go ahead and play that shot back once again, is I felt both images looked really clean, really crisp, but the issue I'm having with it once again is you can actually tell, I think one of the best examples is with this clip, with us running with the cameras, is that Osmo Action's image stabilizer is actually smoother. So as we were shooting this test, filming it in 4K at 60 frames per second, what we realized is the GoPro 7 Black, it actually is hyper smooth function as far as that image stabilizer, it actually can't work at 4K at 60 frames per second. Um, it just does standard stabilization, but not their hyper smooth stabilization that you get with like the 30, 24 frames per second. However, the Osmo Action, it's rock steady, the super smooth um, stabilizer that Osmo Action has, is it does work at 4K at 60 frames per second. So people, athletes out there that want really smooth shots in 4K at 60 frames per second, is you're gonna get a lot smoother shots with the Osmo Action. Once again, I'm gonna keep on playing that over and over so you guys can see exact same setup. Once again, this setup right here, us running right to left, you can see that when this is shaking, the Osmo Action is compensating and making it not look as shaky. So without question for me, and hopefully for you guys, is the Osmo Action does handle image stabilizer better as far as making the shot smoother. Now the next example we're gonna look at is filming at 1080p at 240 frames per second. Now at that frame rate, image stabilizer doesn't work on both of these cameras. So we're not even gonna talk about that. We're gonna throw that out the door. Um, but once we started going and lowering the frame rate, like comparing both images side by side, I couldn't really tell a substantial difference between the images. Um, I started noticing the most when we're filming at 4K um, and the more the 60 frames per second with hyper smooth or rock steady modes turned on. That's when I started seeing the bigger differences. Another big question people are gonna wanna know with this camera is what frame rates can it film in and what resolutions can it film in? So I ended up setting up the Osmo Action. I set it up on a tripod and it was actually on a ledge on a rock, so not something really fancy. And I filmed it at every resolution that the camera was capable of doing. Just so you guys could see how the resolution compared from a 4K image all the way down to a 720p resolution. But I also wanna show you guys what frame rates it could do at each of these resolutions. So every example that you guys are seeing right now is the camera's not moving at all, it's staying stationary. And this is just to illustrate what frame rates are possible with each of the different camera settings. So that was a ton of video examples, but for 
me for our team, like that's the best way to learn is actually comparing the images side by side and testing all the settings that you would normally use and just get a feel for how it actually looks on the bigger screen. So for me, in my opinion, um, and I would say our team's opinion, is the Osmo Action is our new action sport camera. Now, for all those that own GoPro 7s and are like, well, I don't wanna have to buy all the accessories and start all over. Well, the great thing is, is the GoPro and Osmo Action is they're the same sizes. The housings themselves are a little bit different, but everything else as far as this hooks right onto all these plates, the GoPro mount that I have, it actually works just fine on the Osmo Action. So you're not having to throw away all your accessories. I would say 99% of all your accessories you own for the GoPro 7 are gonna work on the Osmo Action, but you're definitely gonna get a cleaner image out of it. You're gonna get a smoother image out of it. And that is the camera that I'm going to suggest. And that, in my opinion, is the best action sport camera out there on the market. Big claim, but I feel we've done the test. We put it out on location, filmed a ton of different things, and that is a camera that has won. So there you have it. Osmo Action is now out there on the market. It is the next game changer of sport videography. So big deal for us and our team. I'll have links down below in the video description if you guys wanna know more about this amazing camera. Thank you so much for watching. Over and out. Today.